What's going on everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now and today we're going to talk about common misconceptions about moving to Arizona here in 2021. Everything from is everyone a cowboy to is all of Arizona a desert. That's what we're going to talk about here. Let's dive in and talk about it. So the first misconception we're going to talk about is rattlesnakes and other poisonous animals always going to get you. So people think that every time they go hiking in the desert that there's a threat. A rattlesnake, a mountain lion, a bobcat, something going to get them. So I'm going to tell you that's a common misconception. Yes, there are rattlesnakes, but not every time you go hiking are you going to get attacked by a wild animal or a rattlesnake or something like that. So don't worry about it, you'll be okay. And here we go, another one that's really a misconception for sure is that Arizona is all a desert. Many of you guys already know this. I think if you've watched our other videos, if you haven't, you can explore this channel. But Arizona has high country, alpine country. We have uh, marshlands like down in Nogales. We have those marshlands. We have uh, Mount Lemon, which is really an interesting uh, topography. You have Mount Graham, then you have the San Francisco peaks up in Flagstaff with snow. You have the White Mountains. But yes, we do have a lot of desert here, but it's not the whole state. In fact, it's maybe 60% of the state is desert, and we have lots of forest. Tonto National Forest, Coconino National Forest. So just get ready for a lot of diversity when you come to Arizona. It's not just desert. All right, so the next misconception is that everyone in Arizona is a cowboy or a city slicker or you know the terms, I don't need to go into all of them, but no, not everyone in Arizona is a cowboy. In fact, most people are not cowboys, although we still do have cowboys. You can go to certain parts of Arizona and see cowboys out there wrangling around with wild horses and cattle ranches across Arizona, but for the most part, everyone in Arizona, 95% of us, not really cowboys. If you get a pair of cowboy boots, doesn't mean you're a cowboy. You get a cowboy hat, doesn't mean you're a cowboy. You go out horseback riding, doesn't mean you're a cowboy. But, hey, it's still fun to pay attention to the history behind it and Tombstone and, all, and whatnot. But, no, not everyone here is a cowboy. One of the things that's a misconception here in Arizona is pronunciation of certain words. Some people call Tucson, Tucson, or Gila, Gila. Okay, we got a couple others that are kind of trippy, like, well, I say trippy because they trip you up, right? Prescott. Well, it sounds like Prescott, but most people here call it Prescott. You also have uh, Javelina, which is a, uh, it's basically a wild pig, but people call it a Javelina. So you have a variety of different words that will kind of catch you off guard when you first get, at, get out here, but uh, it's a misconception because you think it sounds a certain way or said a certain way, but then you find out it's really not. So these words, don't worry about it. You'll get a hang of it after time, but it's Tucson, not Tucson. <laughs> All right, so there's this common misconception that Arizona lacks history and culture. Well, that couldn't be further from the truth. I personally feel as though Arizona has a great deal of rich culture and history here from the Native Americans in Northeastern Arizona with the Navajo, the Hopis, Southern Arizona has the Spanish missions. In fact, Arizona, in a way, is old Mexico. Uh, you have the De Anza Trail, and then you have the modern culture that exists out in places like Tucson, and you have the Sonoran Desert culture, you have Scottsdale culture, Phoenix culture, and if you were to say, well, what exactly is that? Well, it, for the most part, is an outdoors lifestyle. People who love being outdoors, uh, people here are into recreational vehicles, lakes, being on the water and just living a very vibrant, healthy outdoor lifestyle. That's our culture. And the food here is a mix between uh, American food and Southwestern cuisine, like Mexican tacos and stuff like that. So I think Arizona has a great deal of culture. So a common misconception out here in Arizona is that many people have encountered UFOs or aliens, extraterrestrials. We had the Phoenix Lights, the movie from the White Mountains about the guy who was abducted fire in the sky. Some of you may have seen that already, uh, but I personally haven't seen any aliens and I don't know too many people who have been encountering aliens. I have heard stories where people saw things in the skies like what you hear about uh, the Phoenix Lights, especially with uh, SpaceX doing what they're doing. You see these tracers and things in the sky, 
but I don't know too many people who've been uh, encountering any aliens. But people, before they move here, they always ask me, hey, Jeff, are there aliens out there? What's up with the Phoenix Lights? What's up with the aliens? What's up with Area 51? Have you seen anything? One other thing that I'd point out about that, we used to have a Barry Goldwater uh, range down in southwestern Arizona where the U.S. military used to test things out. So that may have been responsible for some of those uh, sightings. So a common misconception with animals. You could see this statue here is of a bald eagle. Well, people don't realize how many animals actually live in Arizona. We did have quite a bit more back in the old days. For example, the last grizzly bear was killed on the Mogollon Rim in the 1930s, or well, so posably he actually committed suicide or tripped and fell, and his name was Old Bigfoot. You can look up the story. But we have a lot of different wild animals. Gray wolves are being reintroduced to southeastern Arizona. We have coyotes. You'll hear them at night out here in all parts of the desert. We have elk. I think even one of the biggest elk in the world can be found or was killed up in the Mogollon Rim, but you can still see big elk up there on the Mogollon Rim. So that's something interesting about Arizona. We've got eagles, hawks, uh, Cota Mondays. I mean, so much wildlife. People don't really understand that. And uh, that doesn't even include all the reptiles and aquatic marine mammals and whatnot. So another misconception is that all the houses look the same. Now, there is a large segment of the homes that are being built in this day and age that do look all the same. They've decided to make these cookie cutter homes, these track homes. Well, there's still a great deal of old school style homes that have brick roofs and different types of roofs out here in Arizona. So no, not all the homes look all the same. You could still get custom homes on property, places like Arcadia, Catalina Foothills. Flagstaff still has a lot of homes that you can get that don't look all the same as your neighbors. But yes, they are building a lot of those, but not everything that's available is gonna be a cookie cutter home. And another misconception is about the water out here in Arizona. So are we in a drought? Do we have a water crisis? Well, let me explain the water crisis in Phoenix more in detail because there's still so many questions about this. Number one is there are aquifers underneath the valley here in Phoenix. Okay, so there's that. But also the, the water, the drinking water that we have out here in Arizona it comes from the mountains, the Rockies, the Colorado River, the Salt River, and all of that snow melt that comes off the White Mountains into the Salt River, off the Verde River, happens hundreds of miles away from Phoenix. So it could be bone dry in a drought in Phoenix, but we still have lots of water here in the valley because guys like, uh, was it Teddy Roosevelt, I believe it was? He came up with the idea to dam up, create these reservoirs that eventually led to uh, the drinking water down here known as Central Arizona Project, Salt River Project. So we have lots of water, believe it or not, for Phoenix. So another misconception is about the OK Corral. The OK Corral shootout happened in 1881 and some of you guys have already seen the movie with Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp called Tombstone. Well, that wasn't originally, that wasn't popular and well known across the world or even the United States until the 1930s. So 50 years after the shootout at the OK Corral, did it start to gain notoriety after being published in a newspaper publication. So I think that's interesting to know. So another misconception is about a jumping cholla cactus. People think that because it's called a jumping cholla that the jumping cholla jumps out at you every time you walk by. Well, it's kind of true, but not really. See, this isn't a jumping choya cactus, this is a yucca, but cactuses, for the most part, they're stationary. Unless you get too close to them and touch them or, you know, step on them, you're not gonna get hit by a cactus. But you don't wanna get a jumping choya in you, it just means it's not gonna attack you. So here's another misconception that Arizona is always hot. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Arizona can actually have the hottest place in the country in say Yuma, and then have the coldest place in the country in somewhere in the White Mountains like Greer. So we're not always hot. We are a state of multiple different uh, climate zones and diversity, but it's not always hot here. I mean, even in Phoenix in February, it can sometimes bring snowfall or hail. 
So, I mean, I've seen some snowfall in this area of Scottsdale that I'm at right now. But uh, North Scottsdale gets more snow. Catalina Foothills gets snow. Plenty of snow up in northern Arizona in the winters. But in the summertime, eh, it does get hot in Phoenix and Tucson. Not going to deny that. But there's plenty of places you can escape to. Like southern Arizona, believe it or not, 4,000 feet elevation. You'll have beautiful weather in places like Bisbee or Tombstone, even if it's 110 in Phoenix. So, hey, make what you can about the situation. So that's going to conclude this episode of common misconceptions from Arizona. If I missed one, drop it in the comments below letting me know what you think is a misconception that out-of-towners or people from out of the state should know about Arizona. Also, if this is your first time to living in Arizona, you can subscribe and turn on the bell. But you also have to hit turn on all notifications if you want to get notified every time we make a video. So thanks to everyone who crushes up the likes, and we'll see you on the next one.